In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use shaders with RetroArch. Now shaders are used to manipulate the image to make it look however you want. For example, you can change your contrast, gamma, saturation and your brightness. But shaders are mostly used for CRT effects. So I'm going to be showing you how to add an individual shader, how to stack and overlay these to create your own presets, how to edit pre-existing presets, and if you're feeling particularly lazy, I'm going to show you some YouTubers that create these so you can just check theirs out and use those if you want to. The first thing we want to do is make sure that our shaders are updated. So you want to go to the main RetroArch menu, then go into online updater, scroll all the way down to the bottom and update slang shaders. When you're messing around with shaders, you need to do so when you've got a game loaded up. So load up a game and then press F1 to get to this menu. Now we're going to make things a hell of a lot easier by changing the opacity of this menu background so we can actually see the image underneath. So we're going to back out of the quick menu, go into the main settings tab on the left hand side, go into user interface, appearance, and then we're going to bring the opacity all the way down to zero. Now we can actually see all of our changes take place in real time without having to menu bash. Yes, we are going to have some menu elements in the way, but that's just a small trade-off. Now you want to back out of this and go back to the quick menu. Then scroll pretty much all the way down to the bottom, go into shaders and make sure that you activate this to bring up all of the shader options. Now first, I'm going to show you how to add and stack individual shaders. So we're going to ignore all of these preset options and go down to shader passes. Now all shader passes means is the number of shaders that you're using. One is one shader, two is two shaders, so on and so forth. And this is of course how we stack these. But for the moment, we're just gonna start with one. To add a shader, you wanna go into this first shader option here. And we've got two folders to choose from, GLSL and Slang. GLSL is really out of date these days and everybody's pretty much converted over to Slang. So you wanna go into this one, and you've got all of these different options to choose from depending on what you want to do. To show you how to do this, I'm going to add some scan lines. So I'm going to go into the scan lines folder, go into the shaders folder, and I'm going to select one of these at random. And if you notice, when you select one, it doesn't actually update. You need to hit this apply changes option to actually update the image. Now for me, I actually don't like this one because it scales the image down. So I'm going to go back into my shaders, select a different one, and then hit apply changes. That does look a little bit nicer, but I still want to check the other ones out. So I'm going to go back into my shaders, select a different one, and hit apply changes. And I'll keep on doing this until I find one that I like. Once you've settled on a shader, you can press F1 to get the menu out of the way so you can get a proper good look at it. Then just press F1 again to go straight back into the shaders menu. Once you have a shader in place, you can edit it to further change how the image looks. There's a few different options, but I'm going to start with filter and scale. This shader filter option has three different settings, default, linear filtering, and nearest neighbor, with default being bilinear filtering. And to put this one into layman's terms, default is just normal, linear filtering is for a smoother overall image, and nearest is for a sharper image. Now this shader scale option controls the scaling of the shader on screen, and we can change this all the way up to times 20. Now the default for each individual shader is gonna be different depending on how the creator set it. For this shader, it's times 16, but for another scanline shader I tried, it was times 9. So don't expect these to be the same between shaders. Changing the shader scale does have a dramatic impact on the image, and it's kind of like changing how much of the shader you're seeing, sort of. And if I'm playing around with this, I like to go through each one sequentially just to see how it looks until I find the sweet spot. So I'll change this to times 1, then press apply changes, times 2, and then keep on going that way until I find the sweet spot. Now, if you notice, as we go through these, the image becomes darker, and that's because we're scaling those scan lines to be closer together as we increase this. For the most part, you are good to keep this on default unless you really want to change it. On top of these filter and scale options, we have shader parameters. So if you go in here, we've got a bunch of other options that are specific to this shader only. Now, the nice thing with these options is that we don't need to keep on hitting apply changes. Everything is updated in real time without having to do that, which is nice. So for this shader, we can change the scanline thickness, glow, highlights, the overall luminance, and the target and source gamma. For me, when I'm introducing scanlines, I do think it darkens the image quite a lot. So what I will do is increase the source gamma to increase the depth, but I'll also increase the target gamma along with it. And I might even increase the luminance boost. But all of this does come down to pure personal preference. And you're not going to know what any of these options do unless you play around with them. So I fully recommend taking these options all the way to their extremes. Take it all the way to the left and all the way to the right just so you know what it does. Now that you know what you're doing with individual shaders, I can show you how to stack these. 
and stacking these comes in handy if you like one effect with one shader and a different effect with a different shader. So I've got all my scan lines looking exactly how I want it to, but I want to add some CRT curvature to this image. I would add an additional shader pass to add an additional shader, then go to this shader option number one here, go into the slang shaders, then go into the CRT folder, and then we're going to see what we've got that curves the screen. And we've got RT curvature right there, ray trace curvature. I'll add this and then I'll make sure to apply changes. And as you can see, it's applied those changes, but unfortunately, it's also removed those scan lines. So what we need to do is go back to the shader scale for this and increase this to where you want it to be. So I want it to be on time 16, press apply changes, and you can see it's updated the image. If you are stacking these, you do want to watch out for the scale. If you leave this at default, you're basically leaving it to chance. Some shaders will override other shaders default options to be something unexpected. So set this exactly where you want it to be if you're stacking. After you've got things looking exactly how you want, you're probably going to want to save this. So you want to go into save preset and there's a few different ways we can save this. Saving by global preset will apply this shader to every single game. Saving by core preset will only apply this shader to any games launched with this same core. Saving by content directory will only apply this shader to any games that reside in the same folder as this game. And saving by game preset obviously will only apply this shader to this specific game. Now some people like to set up shaders on a per game basis. And if you're the same, use the save game preset. However, for me, I like to set up shaders on a per system basis. So I'll use the save core preset. Now, if you wanted to, you could just keep on stacking these shaders and adjusting the image pretty much endlessly. You can add up to 20 shaders. Some of these shaders have more of a singular function that you might want to stack with other shaders. And then you've got different shaders that are more of an all-in-one solution, in which case you probably don't want to stack them with anything. And the amount of shaders that are out there with their different functions and settings, there's as many combinations of shaders as there are atoms in the goddamn universe. And if you're new to this, it's definitely a drop in the ocean situation. Which leads me on to presets. Now a preset is a shader configuration that someone has made that RetroArch have added because it looks nice. Now presets generally use more than one shader and everything's been set up to look a specific way. And there's three different ways that we can load these. We can straight up load in a preset which will override anything that we've already set ourselves or any other presets that we might have already loaded. So if you go into this load preset option, go into the slang folders, we've got all of these presets to play with. So I'm just going to go into this CRT folder and select one at random. And selecting one of these should update it immediately, which makes it super easy just to flick your way through these to find one that you like. So just keep on going through these until you find one. Once you've settled on a preset, if you scroll back down to shader passes, you can see exactly what the creator for the preset has done. And you can see for this preset, nine shaders were used with all of their settings set just so along with their shader parameters to make it look a specific way. However, you can edit all of this if you want to. Now prepend and append preset are used if you want to stack entire presets. Both of these do exactly the same thing, just in a different way. So if we wanted to stack another preset on top of what we've got already loaded, we can add all of those additional shader passes at the top or the bottom of the list. If you wanted to add them at the top, you use prepend. And if you wanted to add them at the bottom, you use append. So if I select prepend preset and then just select another shader at random, wait for it to load up, which can take some time. There we go. We can see we've gone from nine to 12 shaders, but those additional shaders have been added at the top of this list rather than the bottom. Do keep in mind that these shaders are executed in sequence top to bottom and which order you have these in can have an impact on the final image. So you might want to prepend and append just to see how it looks. Now, to be honest, stacking presets is really meant for advanced users or shader creators. And if you're just starting out, it's definitely overkill. So despite all of this amazing advice, my actual recommendation is to not bother with any of this. My true recommendation is to take yourself on YouTube, find yourself a shader creator that you like, preview theirs and just use those. Now, there's a few of these creators out there, but there's really only one that I can recommend. And that is Retro Crisis. And not just because he's a fellow Brit. He creates shader presets for RetroArch that are tailor-made for each individual console's look with the variants that you want. These are resolution specific so you know that all of your scan lines and everything else is going to be scaled correctly. And he provides these with a CRT curve and without a CRT curve. On top of that, these actually look good with clean and dirty versions if you're into that kind of thing. 
Now I will link his full install video and some of his showcase videos in the description below, but I do want to show you how easy it is to use other people's presets. So I've got the Retro Crisis Shaders folder from their GitHub page, which contains all of their presets. Then I'm just going to go into the Shaders folder for RetroArch, go into the Slang Shaders folder, then move the Retro Crisis folder into the Slang Shaders folder. Nice and easy. Then just load a preset like you normally would. So go into Load Preset, the Slang Shaders folder, and we're going to find that Retro Crisis folder we just added. There it is. I'm going to go into 1080p flat because that's the one I want. Then I'm going to find the SNES one and I want the clean one. Wait for it to load up. And there you go. Now one of the main reasons I recommend shaders from Retro Crisis is that if we go into the shader parameters, everything is labeled and categorized correctly. This doesn't happen automatically. This is something that he's done to make it really easy to edit all of this. Having all of this categorized and labeled correctly is worth its weight in gold. If you want to download those shaders, the GitHub page for these is in the description of Retro Crisis setup guide. There we go, that's how to use shaders with RetroArch. Not too tricky to actually do, but to figure out what you actually like and what you want to set is another thing entirely. And I'm thinking about putting together a showcase video covering as many RetroArch shaders as possible, if everybody wants it. If you liked today's video, slam me a thumbs up, and if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.